Hello, welcome to Clean Up Your Room. What does it mean to delete something in Kate's? Today, I'm going to talk about everything delete, uh, how to delete things in Kubernetes, and why some things get deleted and others don't. Um, my name is Aaron Alpar. I'm with Kasten. Kasten is a cloud native data management company. Uh, we deal with data management for disaster recovery as well as cluster migration. Uh, my background as an engineer is mostly in custom database implementations, uh, domain-specific data database implementations uh, for order matching, dating websites, uh, biological analysis, and geodesics. So today I am going to be talking about delete, which can be difficult. Uh, specifically, I'm going to be talking about what properties on a resource can govern deletion. Uh, the two things I'm going to focus on are finalizers and owner references, and I'll get into the details on how these two things can affect deletion of objects within Kubernetes. I'm going to demonstrate how it works, and uh, this is going to be a short presentation. So I have 30 minutes plus Q&A. Uh, so the goal here is to inform, inspire, and make you dangerous. Uh, I encourage you to take uh, what you learn here and experiment with it on a test cluster. So Kubernetes has a lot of commands. Of course, I'm going to be focusing on delete. Um, I'm going to be using four kubectl commands uh, throughout this presentation. I'm going to be using create, get, patch, and delete. To keep things simple, all of my examples are going to use config maps. And the entire presentation is basically going to be presented as a series of shell commands. So the idea is to uh, give you the commands, uh, sh show you how they work, or what their repercussions are or results are, uh, and to give you some examples that you can take back and try for yourself. So here's the basic delete. Uh, all of my shell commands are in bold. The output for those shell commands is the uh, lines immediately following an unbolded, unbolded letters. Uh, here we can see I've got a kubectl create config map, my map. Uh, this is going to create an empty config map. Um, I can then get that config map to prove that it actually exists. Uh, I can then delete that config map, uh, and then I can attempt to get it again. And I can see that I get a 404 back on that last kubectl command, which means that it's not found. This is the basic delete. It is very simple. Uh, we start off with a kubectl create, which creates a live object. I then perform a kubectl delete, uh, which deletes the object and it's basically the final state for the state diagram. Uh, this, is a, this is a state diagram. I'm going to have one more of these uh, within the uh, presentation to basically explain to you uh, how finalizers work. So finalizers. Uh, finalizers are resources on our finalizers are keys on resources uh, that control their garbage collection. Uh, finalizers are keys that are designed to be used by controllers uh, to tell them which which cleanup operations uh, have to be performed before the uh, the resources removal. Um, uh, they are they are very simple. Um, they do not necessarily uh, they do not necessarily point or name code that needs to be executed. Uh, they're just a list. Uh, there are certain dead finalizers uh, that can prevent deletion. Uh, dead finalizers are uh, basically finalizer strings that the controller does not understand uh, and does not know how to deal with. Um, I'll be talking about those. Um, Knowledge of finalizers is particularly useful. And uh, when you start to get into specifics of deleting objects, uh, knowing which finalizer keys uh, mean what controller actions on deletion can be very helpful in debugging why some objects don't get deleted. Uh, I'm going to start off this uh, demo, basically, with a custom config map, uh, which has no properties but contains a finalizer. Um, uh, finalizers are uh, on the metadata of the object. They are a list of strings. In this case, I am adding a Kubernetes finalizer to this object. Um, uh, Kubernetes finalizer is a dead finalizer for config map. A config map resource uh, uh, controller doesn't understand uh, what to do with this, at least as far as I know. Uh, Kubernetes finalizer is actually used on namespaces. 
So this is going to produce some interesting results. So here I'm going to create this config map uh, uh, with the finalizer. Here you can see that the finalizer has been created. Uh, I'm then going to attempt to delete that. And here, let me show you this in code of what actually happens. Let me get my shell up. Here I can create that. And here I'll get the config map. Show you that it actually exists and we can take a look at the content. Uh, here I'm using Kubernetes 1.8, so I get managed fields. Uh, I've taken these out of my, dem my demo slides uh, to keep the slides short. Um, as you can see here toward the top of the object, I've got my finalizer. And uh, if I go ahead and attempt to delete that, uh, uh, Kubernetes is going to tell me that the object has been deleted. It hasn't been deleted in a traditional sense. Uh, it is in the process of deletion. Uh, and here I'll go ahead and I'll background that task. And I'll go ahead and uh, get that object again, and we'll see that it has been modified. Um, specifically, the deletion timestamp has been added to the object. So here I've created a config map with a finalizer on it. I've attempted to delete it. And what's happened in actuality is the object's been updated with a deletion timestamp. Um, the deletion timestamp, uh, Kubernetes added that because it seemed that, that the object has finalizers and it's put it into a read-only state. Um, the deletion timestamp signals that this object can only be read with the exception of removing finalizer keys, uh, updates to the finalizers. So um, this will, uh, the delete will uh, basically hang in the background until I actually go ahead and edit that object. Uh, go ahead and edit this. And I'm going to remove the finalizer and go ahead and write that and we'll see what happens. It tells me the config map's been edited. I remove the finalizer key and notice the delete has continued. Uh, when I go back and try to get that config map, once again, it's not found. So, so just as I showed you, uh, I created the I created the config map with a finalizer, uh, the deletion timestamp. Uh, I tried to delete that. And in actuality, it got updated. Uh, the deletion timestamp got added to it. Uh, and here's a demonstration of using the uh, kubectl patch command. Uh, if I want to delete that object, what I can do is basically patch it on the command line to remove the finalizers, uh, in which case the deletion that I had before uh, running in the background will complete, and the object will be deleted. Uh, when I attempt to get that config map, uh, it will be gone. Uh, here's a state diagram for uh, finalization. So if an object has a finalizer on it um, and you attempt to delete it, it will remain in finalization uh, until the controllers remove the finalizer keys or the finalizers are removed by kubectl. Uh, once that finalizer, uh, finalizer list is empty, the object can actually be reclaimed by Kubernetes. Once it's empty, it will be put in a queue to actually be deleted uh, from the registry. Um, and here's basically a slide that says what I just said. <laughs> uh, keep in mind, finalizers are just keys. Uh, they should be managed by the controllers, but they're not always managed by the controllers, uh, especially in the case of dead finalizers that I just showed you. Um, here's some common finalizers that you've probably seen. Uh, at least the ones I certainly come across the most often are the PV and PVC protection finalizers. Uh, they, they're, they are there to... Uh, uh, govern the deletion of the resources that are in the back of uh, Kubernetes, the actual disks, uh, 
themselves and the actual reservations on the disks themselves. Uh, there's Kubernetes finalizers, which is used in uh, namespaces, and there's a foreground deletion, which I will allude to a little bit, but I won't get too in in depth. Um, so that's it for finalizers. Finalizers basically control how a single object is deleted uh, by the controller. Um, so owner references uh, uh, tell how groups of objects are deleted. Uh, owner references are properties on resources uh, that uh, specify the relationship to one another so entire trees of resources can be deleted. Uh, finalizers rules are uh, processed when there are owner references, so these are not, um, uh, they're somewhat orthogonal uh, in how they work. Uh, and you've probably already seen these uh, on pods. Uh, pods typically have owner references to their replica sets, so when the uh, deployments, stateful sets, or replica sets themselves are deleted, that the pods are taken care of in the process. I'm going to show you a quick example of uh, owner references and how they work. Uh, I'm going to start off with a really simple example and uh, then I'll work into pro progressively more complex examples. Uh, here I'm going to create my parent object first. Uh, since the references are from child to parent, I have to create the parent first. And then I can go ahead and create the child. Um, here I have to do some shell foo uh, to get the UID out of the parent and included in the shot child. And you can see that once again, we have a very simple config map uh, that contains an owner reference uh, to its parent. Uh, an owner reference uh, consists of a name and a UID. Owner references have to be within the name, same namespace. So you'll never see a namespace on an owner reference, but there does have to be, a, uh, there does have to be uh, the object name. It also needs a UID for that reference to work. Uh, here uh, is another example. Uh, here we can see after I created these objects, we can see them both. Uh, you can delete the child. Um, and uh, when an over reference is involved, the deletion of a child typically doesn't really do anything. Or rather, the, the, the child will be deleted, but nothing will, do, will be done with a parent. Things get interesting uh, with uh, deleting the parent. Owner references really uh, um, change how trees of objects are deleted from their parents. So here we create uh, the parent-child references in the config maps. Uh, here I go ahead to delete uh, the config map, the parent config map. And because of, there's an owner reference from the child to the parent, uh, when I go to get those, uh, when I go to get the config map, the config maps, uh, I'll see that none are in the namespace. And here I'll do a quick demonstration of this in my shell. Uh, here I have a, I have a quick script to make this easy on myself. Um, here we create the parent uh, and then we create the uh, we create the child with the parent reference in it. Um, go ahead and create these. I can get the uh, config maps, and here we can see that we have the parent-child relationship. Uh, we have a parent and a, a parent and a child, and that the uh, the relationship is represented in the child. Um, and down here near the bottom, we have the owner reference. Uh, here, uh, if I go ahead and do the delete, um, uh, it tells me that uh, the my map parent has been deleted, but in actuality, uh, the parent and child have been deleted. Uh, it's telling me if I go ahead and try to get the config maps within the namespace, the default namespace, no, no uh, resources are found because they've both been deleted. So getting back to the presentation, 
Um, uh, we can see that there, there's sort of a cascading operation by default uh, when there's an over owner reference uh, from a child to a parent. When you delete the parent, uh, the, the children are automatically deleted. Uh, this is called cascade. Uh, the default for cascade is true. The cascade option can be specified and delete uh, and basically specifies whether or not it should orphan children. Um, Um, now this cascading property can can change. Uh, it can be the the cas there's the cascade option on the delete can be specified to basically uh, allow you to orphan children. So you can delete a parent without actually deleting the children. If you delete the parent um, uh, with a delete command using cascade equals false, uh, what it will do is it will uh, take the owner references off of the children but leave the children intact. Uh, there is something that's also called propagation policy, which the cascade option links to, uh, which controls the order in which the uh, the order in which the nodes in the uh, order in which the nodes in the tree are deleted. Um, before this, I'm going to start up a proxy in the background. And here, let me go ahead and uh, demonstrate uh, the uh, the demonstrate uh, the cascade equals false. And in the process, I will start a proxy. So I've just made my uh, tree again. I've started my proxy. Um, I'll use the proxy in the next example, but for this example, uh, I'll show you how the cascade works. In this example, I have a parent, a child and a parent. Um, Uh, in this case, I'll go ahead and get the child uh, as YAML. And we can see in near the bottom here uh, that we still have, we have owner references um, to the parent. And if I delete uh, with cascade equals false, uh, my parent, as you remember earlier, this is deleted when I ran this uh, without a cascade option, it deleted the entire tree. Here, I'll go ahead and delete the parent with cascade equals false. Uh, it's come back with exactly the same response as I got before. Config map, my map parent has been deleted. But as we'll see, uh, my map child still exists. And in fact, when I get that, Uh, you'll notice that the owner reference on the child config map has been removed. So, uh, this is done uh, by setting the, the, what happens in the back end is the propagation policy when you, when you specify cascade false is it sets the propagation policy for the API call. And that's what we'll be looking at next. Propagation policy uh, allows you uh, to change the order in which objects are deleted within a tree. Um, propagation policy cannot be specified on the command line uh, with kubectl uh, other than uh, orphaning objects. Uh, you have to specify it uh, using a custom API call. This is how you do it. Um, you, you create, just as in the previous object, you create a proxy. Uh, so you have access to the API server uh, from your client. Uh, and then you can execute a curl command uh, with just the URL to basically execute that delete command. Uh, this is the curl command for the deletion. Uh, and in here, I can specify all sorts of options, one of which is a deletion option. 
uh, and the propagation policy for a background deletion. So uh, here's an example of that. I will show you this. Uh, I, I will show you this uh, running on the examples that I have uh, in just a moment. Uh, this is a background uh, propagation policy. Uh, this sets the order uh, to delete I, uh, delete uh, from parent to child. So there's three there's three different options for the propagation policy. There's foreground deletion, uh, which is the post order deletion. Uh, or you can specify a background deletion, which is a pre-order deletion. Uh, foreground uh, is children are deleted before the parents are deleted. Background is parents are deleted first, uh, parent is deleted before their children. Uh, you can also specify owner, which is just like specifying cascade equals false, uh, which uh, means that the owner references will be ignored uh, and the parent will leave the children intact. The owner references on the ch children will be removed. And let me go over and demonstrate this really quick. Let me clean up. There we go. There are my config maps, and let me get the command. Uh, here's the curl command uh, to perform the delete through a raw API call. Uh, here I'm doing this because I want to specify a uh, custom propagation policy. And there I got a response back that says that the deletion was successful. Uh, I go here. I should see that I have no config maps left in my namespace because they've been deleted. Uh, Keep in mind that when you, when you delete an object and owner references have been specified, that finalizers will be honored in the process. So let me switch back to the presentation. Uh, that finalizers will, be, uh, finalizers will be honored. So this can lead to situations where basically you have trees of objects are, are that trees of objects that have not been deleted is basically you end up with partial deletions. Um, it's then you've got to, at that point, you have to dig in, you have to look at the existing owner references on your objects with some knowledge. If the owner references have been deleted, what they were before, as well as the finalizers uh, to understand what's happening there. The goal, once again, the goal here is to give you the tools to figure that out. Um, so there's an exercise that you'll have to go through to uh, do a little bit of research. Um, there's one situation uh, that you might run into where you need to force finalization for a namespace. Uh, this is a, a basically, if you've deleted a namespace, you've cleaned out all of the objects under it, um, but yet the namespace still exists. Uh, here's the command to force the finalization. This is one of the reasons why I showed you the raw API calls before. Um, this, there's, a, uh, there's an API call off of, a, uh, off of the namespace it's called finalize. It informs, the, it informs the namespace controller that it needs to remove the finalizer from the namespace and perform any cleanup. It's basically a nice way of telling the namespace to remove the, uh, remove the finalizer on it. So, so thus concludes the presentation. So um, your takeaway, takeaways from this are finalizers can get in, the, get in the way of the deletion of resources, especially when there's tr uh, trees involved uh, of owner references. Um, 
Generally, there's a reason for a finalizer's presence. You should investigate first before manually deleting it. Um, owner references allow tree, trees of resources to be removed, specified and removed. And once again, finalizers are honored in that process. So they can, they can result in partial deletion, of, uh, partial deletion of trees. Propagation policy can be specified in a custom API call to change the order in which resources are deliver, uh, deleted. So if you're in a situation where you do have a partial tree, uh, you can control how those objects are deleted by specifying the propagation policy on the API call. So here are some additional references. Um, these sp specify in a lot more detail about how the garbage collection process occurs. Uh, please take a look and thank you. That is it.